Hi everyone, Lee Veras here, kicking it old school with Photoshop techniques and tips for teachers and students. In today's rant, we're going to look at the Select and Mask dialog, and specifically we're going to look at the Decontaminate Color, a little checkbox which is supposed to miraculously cure all our color fringing issues that we might have uh, with our masking. And um, I'm going to look at why that may not always do the best job uh, and how you can achieve better results uh, using old school techniques. So let's dive right in here. I've got uh, I've got an image open here, nicely uh, shot on a on a colored background. We're going to mask it out. So uh, what we make sure we do first is we're going to double click on the background to make it a layer because I want to add a layer mask to this. And then I just go ahead and select any uh, selection tool and we can see the select and mask button show up here and we're going to click on that. And now we're in the, the select and mask dialog and we can kind of see at the top here uh, that we have a number of different ways of displaying this. Uh, this is the default, the onion skin. Uh, we can display it on white. We can display it on back black. But right now we don't have a mask yet. Uh, so let's start with onion skin so we can see what we're doing. We're going to get the uh, the quick select tool, which is the default tool here uh, in Photoshop. And I have, I have it set with a fairly small brush. Um, you The idea is you just sort of drag it over the parts of the image that you want to uh, preserve. So this is going to be our foreground subject and we're going to mask off the background. So I'm just sort of dragging near the edge and you know, see there I, I made a, a, I, I dragged into the background. So we, we've got some of the background. So I want to subtract that from the selection. I'm going to hold down the option or alt key on Windows and we're just going to brush over the part that we want to subtract back out and I'll finish adding back in. You can see very quickly it found the edges and it's done a pretty reasonable job. But now we want to uh, we want to get a little bit of an edge radius so that uh, we can start refining the edge. So I usually start at about 10 pixels here. Uh, and then we're going to want to use the refine edge brush here. Uh, and we're going to brush over the parts in the hair where we can see that blue background. And we just sort of want to make sure we get all of those um, hair whiffs <laughs> covered by the brush. You can see how it's recalculating the mask as I brush over this. And, you know, it really does a pretty good job. And at this point, uh, we could say we're done and we check our output settings here. We're going to make a layer mask. And I'm not going to decontaminate the colors yet just because I want to show you uh, what that is supposed to do and how it works and doesn't work. So let's uh, let's click on OK and we get now our uh, image masked off. And you can see I've edited my transparency preferences so that I have a very subtle uh, checkerboard pattern there. I covered that in, uh, uh, I believe, the first rant we did, which was about the interface in Photoshop. So let's, let's zoom in and we can kind of see, yep, there is a little bit of color fringing that goes all the way around. And so perhaps we're going to want to do it's, not, it's really not too bad here, but you can still see it's sort of blue colored, you know, the hair wisps. We've got a little blue fringe all going all the way around. OK, so let's let's go into the properties here where we're going to find the mask properties. And I, here we see the select and mask button uh, again. Um, and so we can we can always enter the re-enter the select and mask dialog this way. Okay, and this time let's display let's display the image on white so we can really see that that fringe showing up. Okay, so that's what this decontaminate colors checkbox is supposed to do, right? So we're gonna check that. And let's take a look and sure enough it looks like it eliminated the, the the blue fringe and what we have to do is create a new layer with the layer mask because we're actually altering the pixels in the image to sort of color the the fringe area so i'm going to go ahead and and say okay there and that gives us a new layer 
All right, and now I want to toggle. I'm going to toggle between uh, this layer and the other layer, but it's a little awkward to do that because I have to click on the eye and uncheck it, and then click on the eye and uncheck the other one. So I'm going to show you another little tip here. Whenever you have to do a, a toggling that requires more than two steps here, um, you can use layer comps to give you a more instantaneous toggle. So we're going to create a, a layer comp. You can see this little button here. Um, and when I click on the new, what looks like a new document icon here, if we click that, that's our new layer comp. And this is going to be our uh, decontaminate. And if I can spell correctly, I got it there. So that's our uh, de decontaminate state. And then uh, we're going to turn that off and turn on the original. And we're going to make a new layer comp here, which will be original. Original mask. OK. And uh, let's toggle between these two. And all I, all I have to do is, is uh, and I'm going to move this over just a little bit so we can see. I'm just going to click on the decontaminate, and I have an instantaneous switch from one to the other. You can see I can toggle back and forth. And you can see certainly the, the fringing has disappeared, but there's kind of some weirdness going on there. That's, uh, it, it, you know, why is it doing that? Well, the, the answer to this is, is fairly complex, but usually you get into trouble in Photoshop whenever you use something that's automatic. And in this case, decontaminate uh, is sort of an automatic thing. It's doing an automatic calculation um, that's kind of a little bit like a, a minimize or maximize function in it somehow. So it's, it's spreading the pixels of the original image into the edge of the image. And it's doing kind of, you can kind of see weird artifacts happening up here. Let's, uh, let's look up at the hair because that's kind of another area. So here we have, you know, it's kind of it, not the most ideal mask, but it's actually done a pretty good job at preserving some of the hair wisps, but they're blue, right? So let's decontaminate the color. And it does a good job, but it's introducing some highlights in the hair that weren't really there. And I'm not really sure why it's doing that. I mean, it is, it is sort of coloring the hair, hiding the fringe. Um, the hair gets a little flat looking though in, in this area. Let's look, look, here's an area that has a lot of, a lot of kind of uh, furry wisps. And let's look at the original and the decontaminate. It's kind of, there's more subtle things in the hair and it gets kind of flattened out in a weird way uh, in the decontaminate color. So, all right, well, and, and we seem to have missed some areas in there, right? Or that are got a little blue areas that are a little too deep for the decontaminate color to reach in. Uh, see up in here too. Um, there's the original, there's a decontaminate. Somehow it just doesn't reach these areas. Okay, so let's, let's go back and uh, let's look at kind of the old school way of dealing with this. So I'm going to return to my original and um, we're going to deal with the fringe the old school way. So the old school way is if you have fringe, um, especially like this, let's edit the mask instead of the pixels in the image. Because if we alter the pixels in the image, we're always going to get in trouble a little bit. So let's, let's select the mask. Uh, and this is a technique I like to use when you don't have to do the same thing all the way around. You know, so there's no real automatic way because we want to treat these hair wisps a little bit differently than this edge. Um, you know, this edge, we can, uh, we can use this technique here. We're going to use the blur tool and I'm going to just run it along the edge here that has the, I'm going to leave this stuff alone because that's just needs a different kind of coloring, but I don't want to eat into the edge of the image here. I, but along here, I don't mind. I certainly could trim the mask in to eliminate that, that background. So I've, I've run the blur tool over this and then I'm going to use the burn tool. Okay. So the burn tools here, you might see the, the dodge tool up. It's underneath that. We select the burn tool 
and I'm using, I'm going to burn shadows, at fairly high exposure here of 80%. Now watch this. I'm going to just brush over that edge with the burn tool. And it's like I'm erasing that blue fringe. Isn't that pretty, pretty miraculous? I mean, it does require me to use the brush. What's happening? Let's take a look at what's happening. I'm going to solo the mask by option or clicking on it. Now I've blurred that edge. You can kind of see how it's blurred here. If I brush over it with the burn tool, I am sharpening up that edge and creeping it in. You can see how it's, it's actually the dark parts are moving towards the white parts because I'm making the, the gray areas more black. So if I make the gray areas more black, it makes um, the edge a little sharper, but it also moves it in a little bit. Let's take a look. Go back. Yeah, see how it's, I creep the edge in. It's called choking the mask. So we can go up there and using the burn tool, and obviously I am burning only in the layer mask, not on the image. And it kind of creeps the edge in. So I can only, you know, I can I can work that edge in to eliminate, you know, sometimes it's, you know, if you didn't shoot on a bright blue background like this, it, it might be harder to see that fringe. Maybe it's a little gray line. Maybe it's a white line. Uh, but here, if I, if I brush against that blurred edge, I can trim this all in. I'm, I'm eliminating the blue fringe. And we're going to have to do something to this, you know, under the, the chin here because it's gotten a little blue uh, color from that background spilling over into it. But I, I can go in very effectively. Okay, so we've sort of eliminated the fringe there. There, I'm going to deal with that differently. Now up here, I don't want to burn the edge because I'm going to eliminate hair wisp. So I have to use something else. And I, what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to colorize the blue hair wisps with color of the hair. So I'm going to make an empty layer here. I only need one. And um, we're going to clip that to the underlying layer. So I hold down the Option or Alt, and I click in between the two layers, and it forms a, a clipping group where this layer now, which is going to be a a color layer and we're going to use that to color the hair um, is now constrained by the layer mask here but it is being applied over that uh, that image and we're going to change the blend mode from normal come down here to color all right so we're going to color the hair wisp so the idea here is I get a brush and we'll make this a little bit bigger a little softer and if I hold down the option or alt, I turn it into the sample tool and I can pick up the color of the hair that is close to uh, the blue wisps that I want to recolor. And now I can just brush over that. I'm going in and brushing it 100% here. Now, you want to pick um, from the color of the hair that's closest so that it matches. You know, so that way we, we don't introduce a different color uh, across that edge. And I'm just going around and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll sample a color of hair there that's close. Again, maybe this hair is a little more blonde. You can kind of see the hair is not always uh, uniform in color, but this way I can make sure, because I can see where the blue is, I can make sure that I am coloring all the hair wisps. Now I'm not spreading pixels, uh, which the decontaminate color, that's really what it's doing, is it spreads the pixels uh, into the edge. So you can get into trouble where it creates, um, it flattens out the color because it's spreading pixels rather than colorizing the wrongly colored pixels, which is what's happening with those the blue hair wisps. So now we've done that and we've kind of brought the color into the hair wisps. And maybe over here, let's zoom in. I'm going to try and sample a color that 
isn't quite so blue uh, in the interior here and then brush this over that so maybe along here you know I can also colorize if I want to preserve some of that bit of that edge thing happening there and then down in here well down in here I would want to uh, I would want to sample um, a non-blue skin color that matches and now this is a little trickier so I tend to want to reduce the opacity so that I don't like overdo it with the color because I want to kind of blend it in and not like just kill that color so I want to sample a color like this and kind of bring it in slowly so I'm 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 brushing multiple times rather than trying to catch that color immediately and it helps me to feather feather this color into the rest of the neck okay over in here I want to sample a, a lighter skin color and bring that around again a slightly um, bluish color not really that blue but I want to kind of take that hint of blue out completely and over here maybe I'll, I'll do some of this it seems like the lips stuck together here uh, a little bit so I'm going to use another little trick here uh, instead of using the blur tool along the edge I'm going to use a smudge tool and and literally push from outside the mask the um, into uh, and by using the smudge tool I can kind of push things into a point all right so I've edited the edge of the mask but now I have I can see no color fringe so let's let's take a look let me zoom this into 100 percent so we can really really look at that edge and let's toggle between our our uh, layer comp states here so here's uh, the original there's the decontaminate color back to the original you can kind of see that the the decontaminate color really messes with the edge it make you know it destroys the detail along the edge because it's spreading pixels look at that look at the end of the nose so there it has a natural highlight now it's got this kind of flat weird color that's spread along the edge look what it's done here it's really kind of messed that up so um let's I'm gonna make a new one because it's it's taking off my colorizing here I'm gonna make a new layer comp here and we'll just call it new and uh, now we'll just talk between the new state and the decontaminate state All right let's go up and look at the hair so remember here's in the decontaminate state we have these odd highlights and here's with the colorized hair which doesn't change in value from the original hair which was colored blue right so it's it's now recolored but it doesn't have the odd you know kind of pixel spreading look that the decontaminate color has and let's see over here uh, I know this this was an area that had some like more blue in it here's the decontaminate you can see little areas of blue and a little odd uh, look to it now we bring back the see the little more detail shows up in the hair uh, using the approach that I uh, showed you so so sometimes the uh, automatic the newfangled automatic features uh, don't work as well as the old school techniques uh, which may take a little bit more time uh, but really this is not hard to do you just have to take a little more time be a little more careful zoom into the edge I can't tell you how many tutorials I've I've seen on YouTube where they they show you this from zoomed out like this you can't really see what's going on show me the details zoom into 100% and then we'll check it out so uh, here you can see um, that this approach works much better so I hope you like that Thank you, and uh, stay tuned for another Photoshop rant. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Photoshop Rant.
You might be interested in more detailed information on my website, and you might consider following me on YouTube and Twitter to find out about my various classes and workshops. Be sure and like the video, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You might consider following me on Instagram, and I have two books in print available on Amazon in Kindle as well as paper versions, Master in Exposure in the Zone System for Digital Photographers, and my bestseller, Skin, the Complete Guide to Digitally Lighting, Photographing, and Retouching Faces and Bodies. If you're looking for more in-depth Photoshop tutorials, I have a number of video courses available from my online school under the Education menu at veras.com. And my latest Photoshop course is Complete Hair Masking, where I go into great detail on various old and new school techniques for creating great hair edge composites, including how to illustrate hair wisps using special brushes and stock photos of wigs, which I provide for download in the course. Thank you for watching. Post your questions and suggestions for topics to explore under the video, and I'll see you in the next Photoshop rant.